Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we take a look at a 300 meter Seiko Tuna, reference number SBBN 015. This is actually a discontinued model that has been replaced by the SBBN 031, basically the same watch with a few cosmetic differences. While this one uses the traditional tuna hands, the newer model uses a variant of what many call monster hands, as the design was first used on the legendary Seiko monster. Although many purists hated Seiko for abandoning this design, the new handset has slowly grown on people and even the hardcore fans are slowly accepting them. But there are still many people out there that prefer this over the newer version. Partly it's down to the hands and partly it's down to this legendary Marine Master inscription on the dial and the beautiful S signed crown that have both been replaced with the new Prospects logo on the newer version. Although I personally have nothing against the new Prospects logo, I too find this version better looking. Because of these design differences and because this version is discontinued, it makes it an easier watch to flip if you decide tuna is not really your thing. Although most people experience the exact opposite. They go from not understanding what all the fuss is about to adoring this lineup of Seiko watches. There are several reasons for that and we'll start with the design. Seiko Tuna has probably the most original design in the world of dive watches, but that alone wouldn't make it a success if the design wasn't functional and purpose built. And that is exactly what this watch is. Everything on this watch is there for a reason, serving a functional purpose. The oversized markers and hands, filled with an ample amount of nuclear loom, are here to make the time easily readable at all times and in all conditions. The screws are there to hold the shroud in place. The shroud is there to protect the bezel. And even the shroud cutouts are placed in the corners not because someone thought it would make them look cool, although it does, but because those are the positions where you mostly place your fingers when you want to rotate the bezel. This meaningful design shouldn't come as a surprise, as it took Seiko 7 years and 20 patents to develop the first tuna. And they decided to develop this perfect diver's watch after receiving a letter from a diver who complained about the crystal of his Seiko watch popping off during deep dives. The crystal popping was a result of the mixture of helium and oxygen that divers use when going on deep saturation dives. As divers and their equipment gets pressurized, the molecules of helium penetrate regular watch gaskets. And then as they get decompressed at the end of the dive, they expand and since they can no longer exit via the gaskets, they simply blow the crystal outwards, ruining the watch. Companies like Rolex, Omega and Doxa solved this problem by incorporating a helium release valve that releases the helium as it expands. But Seiko took a more elegant and simpler solution with the tuna. They developed L-shaped gaskets that stop the helium from coming into the watch in the first place, making the use of a valve unnecessary. This makes for a simpler and more robust design. The original tuna and the current 1000 meter tunas are even more robust by having a monoblock case removing another possible water intrusion point. The 300 meter tunas, like this one on the other hand, come with a regular case back, but they still retain the helium resistant structure. Since this is a battery powered watch, I actually prefer to have a regular case back as replacing a battery is less of a hassle. And speaking of the battery, we have to mention the movement, which is the second reason behind the popularity of this watch. This watch is powered by a 7C46 quartz movement. This is yet another thing that shows just how purpose-oriented this watch is, as even a cheap quartz movement is more accurate and tougher than any mechanical movement, so using it on a dive watch that will be knocked around makes more sense. But this is no ordinary and cheap quartz. 
This high torque movement is used exclusively on both the 300 meter and 1000 meter tunas. So it was designed and built for the tuna and never used in anything else. It is jeweled, serviceable and over engineered to handle the use of these oversized hands while still being energy efficient, giving the battery a 5 year life cycle. And to see and appreciate the quality of the movement, you don't have to open the watch and look at the metal bridges, as the quality is evident by simply observing the seconds hand. As you can see, it hits all the markers almost perfectly every single time. And anyone who owned an analog quartz watch knows that is very rare, even on expensive quartz watches. This quality and pedigree of the movement, as well as the fact that it is used exclusively in the tunas, makes it one of the rare quartz movements that even watch snobs approve. I only wish Seiko included an instant day-date change, as this one takes up to 4 hours to do it. But it's definitely not a deal breaker. The final thing that makes these so popular is the way they wear. Thanks to a round and practically lugless design, anyone can wear these without looking ridiculous. I have a 6.7 inch wrist and usually wear 37 to 40 millimeter watches and yet this tuna, despite a daunting 47.5 millimeter diameter, looks perfect on me. It is incredible how this rounded design has resulted in a watch that has a large wrist presence but somehow doesn't look too big. The comfort is yet another byproduct of the case shape as this is one of the most comfortable watches I have worn and it hasn't left my wrist ever since I got it. As you might assume, I simply adore this watch and think it will stay as a permanent part of my collection. It is not perfect, as I dislike the use of hard legs on such an expensive watch and find the bracelet and clasp a bit disappointing, which I covered in my rant video. But it is so original and has such a rich history behind it that I'm willing to ignore the things I dislike. If you're on the fence of getting a tuna, and especially if, like me, you're having doubts because of your wrist size, I would advise you to go ahead and get one. You will be surprised at how small and how comfortable this wears. And even if you decide a tuna is not for you, trust me, you will have no problem at all selling it. Well, that completes this week's video, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, bye.